Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Guys, so like I was explaining to you, uh, thanks for doing this number one, but uh, the whole idea of this is like uh, to, it's called the Warrior's Code and the idea of the Warrior's Code is that we kind of find out the values and the principles that like have maybe underlined your performance in the past that allowed you to get to where you got to and then the kind of values and principles you hope to carry into the, the challenges and the battles and the, and the tournaments that you have in the future. Um, and uh, both the ones that have provided the foundation for your best days and I suppose the ones that have like sustained you through like your toughest days and um, so that anybody who's, who watches or, or, or takes an interest and has a look at it can hopefully learn from it as they try and establish their own um, values and principles. So the first um, so the first question I'll probably put to you would be um, when, when you look back <clears throat> at your like career as a whole and obviously your progression through all the different ranks right up to the, um, to the, to the levels that you've, you've you've uh, gotten to what do you think um what do you think were the underlying values and principles that allowed you to develop the quality of skills that you have um to allow you to have had as much success as you have over your career representing ireland and britain and gbni at the highest levels what do you think um what do you think, what do you think were the, the the values and principles that, that laid the foundation for that um I definitely practice a lot. You know, I train. I, I gave a lot of time throughout school to to golf. Like, I think I gave up a lot of stuff, which I wasn't too like mad about anyway. Like drinking wouldn't be a massive thing for me anyway. But, um, see, a lot of my friends would love that 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 side of things, and I kind of was. I liked it every now and again, but um, I used to spend a lot of time training and making sure I was ready. There's a lot of stuff building for the summer because most golf is in the summer. So um, I used to practice quite a lot, blindly sometimes even, just to fill a need that I had that I trained because that's what everyone else was doing. Um, and then I gradually kind of got better. Like as every, every year I got better, you know, um, just in some small way because I don't know, just maybe in my head, I was progressing slowly and that made sense in my, in my head, you know. A big jump was, was maybe a difficult thing for me to do at the time. So I gradually got better. And there was always moments like every year where, you know, I'd, I'd play well in some a bigger tournament and then I'd get noticed for maybe monster selection and then I'd play a bit better and play good in a, in a bigger tournament the next year and then get an Irish selection and I'd end up going to college and making the Irish teams and then I'd do something internationally that would get me recognized for St. Andrew's Trophy and then obviously the World Cup at the end of my amateur career it was um, behind it all I was just I was just trying to maybe do my best to be honest really um, every time I went out and I kind of lost sight of that in the last four or five years um, with a combination of a lot of things um, expectation and um, not really knowing how to deal with certain situations, you know. Um, and I didn't know that I wasn't able to at the time, you know. I kind of knew, but I didn't really know. And it, mm -hmm. because I didn't really know, I wasn't able to reach out to people um, like I am able to now, let's say. And when you go back, you know, like, when you're like, oh, <clears throat> I, I trained a lot and I sacrificed and stuff and all that. Like, have you any sense of, like, you're at the practice ground in Waterford, you're on your own, you're probably the best junior at that. I presume you were the best junior at that club at the time at your age group, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're hit, you're standing there hitting balls. Like, have you any sense of what? Like, what 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 was sustaining you? What was the driving force? What was the vision behind the effort that was going in? I'm not sure to be honest. I just I I loved it. Like, you know, I was by myself a lot. Like, and I didn't yeah. mind it at all. You know, I I just loved hitting balls and, and getting better and. You know, maybe a part of me loved like um, I loved the perception of of working hard. You know, people seeing me working hard. I know it sounds bad. Like I'm sure there's yeah. a lot of people 
like yeah. I admit, but like, um, you know, it's, at the end of the day, you're a performer. Like, you, know, you get your thrill from performing in front of massive amounts of crowds and, and people supporting you and stuff, like, like an artist would if they, if they go on stage, you know, mm. where, they, where they get, where they need, you know, where they perform and get their thrill in a way. <clears throat> so there's a lot of that as well, you know. I needed to, to practice because when I do well, people will say, oh, yeah, he was down the practice ground, you know, all, all the time training, you know, to see, to see the work he's putting in, all that kind of stuff. But then, the, like, it didn't really matter at the time. Like, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. It's what you put in. Maybe my, <clears throat> my reasons for doing it were skewed, some, like a small percentage. But the overall thing was I just loved doing it. I love being out there. I love hitting balls. I love learning like how to hit different shots. And, you know, we didn't have an amazing practice ground facility. We don't actually have amazing practice facilities in Waterford um, itself compared to like other counties. Yeah. So, um, there's so many good golfers come from Waterford. Big time. They big, big off a lot, you know, with my friends growing up and you kind of learn to take a bit of slagging. You learn to deal with situations that way. And, um, and it was it was good, yeah, and, and I really enjoyed. It. Did you have Did you have many lads that you battled against when you were a kid? Like, was there <clears> many like <throat> other players like that you would go out and like? Okay, you spend all that time training on your own, and then like that you would pit pitch your efforts against that you can remember. <clears throat> yeah, there's there's a few guys um, around my issue, but they weren't. Um, see, when I was sixteen, we had, we got to the All Ireland final of the Senior Cup, so we had a good team that year. Shams Power played as well. He came back from college. He was in his final year in college, I think, in America. Right. He played in the Munster side of things. He wasn't allowed to come back. He wasn't released to come back and play in the All Ireland. So we ended up losing in the final. We could have done with him. <laughs> <laughs> so another really good player in our club was a guy called Mark Shanahan, left hand. Yeah. Player. yeah. And he was very good, you know, very, very competitive. When I used to go out and play, like, we used to always like, Try to be, love to beat him. Like if I can beat him today, like it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a big day when I was that when I was that young. Like and um, you know, he was kind of a a very shrewd character. Like you know, so it was tough to beat him. Like he wants to win as well. And it was good crack as well between us. And you know, I still do. I played with him a few times this year as well. With a few other friends as well. Phil Spratt and his, his dad runs the golf club below there. He's a good player. And, um, another friend of mine has gotten pretty good at golf in Glasgow, Christy Murphy. Play with him a good bit too. Um, but yeah, probably the main guy I used to play with that was, you know, really competitive in my home club anyway was Mark Shannon. He used to kind of drive me on. And then obviously Seamus was yeah. where I got yeah. inspiration. And a lot of that actually what I said there, but on the practice ground and hitting balls and all that. A lot of that came from Seamus. He probably doesn't know that now. <laughs> um, a lot of it came from, I remember I caddied when I was 12. I caddy for Philip Spratt, who then a foursomes match with, a junior foursomes match with Seamus <clears throat> in Mitchellstown. I don't remember the round really that much. I just remember him going down an extra hole. And I remember seeing Seamus hit like a, the third shot into the par five from the rough. And just, I was standing behind it, seeing it like, you know, down the line. Mm. Being like, like we're watching a pro chase. It. I was like, holy shit, you know, like what shot? And then we walked up and it was like this far from the hole. And then, like, I, get, I got so much inspiration from that shot. And yeah. maybe, like, I want, I want to be able to do that. Right. You know, I want to do that. And then I spent days on the practice ground learning, trying to figure out how, how I can get that good, how I can do that. Because everything I do, everything I choose to do, I want to be really good at it or I want to do it really well. Mm. No matter what it is. Like, if I go cooking a meal out there, like, it's going to have to be the best like, that I can do, you know, yeah. in that moment. Or if yeah. I go... You know, um, I don't know any any sport I play, like even kicking the ball around. Like, has, if it's any way competitive, like I want to win. You know, that kind of thing. Is it that, that, that? That's what kind of drove me as well. I got a bit of inspiration there, and I wanted to be able to do that. So I saw something that, like, oh my god, so so good, and he's at such a high level. He was eighteen at the time. Won the Irish Youth. He won ended up winning trade and went to college in, in the states. And I was on the PGA Tour, like so. At the time, I was. This guy is, oh my God, you know, I want to be able to do that. And there's only one shot, like one shot that, that I looked at and be like, yeah, that's what I want to be able to do. And that, that was the driving force behind me. It's funny, like that one moment can be enough of a vision to drive years of training, like to yeah. get you to, like, 
you know, that one moment might have been enough to get from 12 to 15 where you get your skills way up. Yeah. And then other things come in and probably drive you on from there on out, but that one moment might have been the initial spark. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely was the initial. I can't remember many other ones being as significant as that one, anyway, for sure. And then the the thing that, and this is something that's probably come up a lot, like any of the time, especially these, like, the warrior code chats have done, um, has been the competitiveness piece. Um, is like, you know, you know, ever that you want to compete, like anything that's there, you want to like, you want to compete. And, and then the, the other thing that you said was really interesting is like, no matter what you do, it has to be of a high standard and it, you, it has to be the best you can do at it no matter what. And I've seen that obviously over the years, having like spent a lot of time with you. And it's always a trait in you that I have admired. Um, and how do you, like when you were a kid, how did you balance that, like that will to compete, that want to win, that like that will to, um, to beat like, uh, your mate Shannon over nine holes into like then you know deciding what really good is at each thing that you do if you get me like um, I think it came from probably fears probably moments I've seen you know you watch some stuff on TV you see a lot of it sometimes can be misleading because they only show the best players in the moment in the best shots but maybe moments with your, your peers, so like I was always, as I said, I was gradually got better every year. So I was always kind of just edging on, to, on to, edging on to teams and stuff. And then everyone on the team was kind of better than me. And that was the driving force to me. I want to be better than them or as good as them, you know. That was a big driving force for mine. And it really steered my level. So I was like, okay, I know I can get to that level next year. This wasn't conscious now, like I wasn't thinking. Yeah, of course, about it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, like this just like happened, and I'm thinking back on it now. And this is how it probably happened in my head subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I went. So every time I'd see something, like I remember, played my first time playing Monster Boys, Monster Interpose, so Interpose from Monster, in boys level. Um, I was 16, and I played against Paul Dunn, who was a year old, and he just happened in the Irish boys, and I was a nobody, like, and he was, you know the top of the boys in Ireland. I remember thinking, so I played against him and he had so many shots that I was like, oh, you know, this is, this is, this is unreal. Like, you know, so much better than me <clears throat> at this moment in time. And that really gave me like an idea of like, okay, I'm here. This is where I need to be over the next few years. If I want to be anywhere near it, if I want to make an Irish team, you know, or an Irish squad or to enable you to get, Training. Another thing, actually, just thinking of there now is the facilities. So we didn't have like amazing facilities in Waterloo. So the thought of going to Carton House and being on an Irish team, like that was like, oh my God, amazing. I'm sure if you lived around Carton or in Dublin, like, and you do that all the time, you go to those, it wouldn't, wasn't the same. Couldn't mm-hmm. have been. Like I was, that was another driving force behind, like I wanted to practice hard so I can get to one of those teams. And I can, you know, when you got on a team, you got free balls and, and gloves, like from the tight list or whatever. That was another thing. There's a load of small things um, mm. that draw you on. But yeah, it was definitely definitely seeing people in your peers that were like better than you and trying to get better than them. Um, and then I was very good at that. I was very good at chasing that. And then when I got to, just thinking about it now, when, when I got to a point where I was a top dog, we'd say, or whatever, on, in the boys' level for Munster, for, for Ireland, in around there, I was good at it at that time. And then when I moved on to Irish and I got to talk to I, it was okay. At my final year then, I got a bit, when in 2015, the World Cup year, I got a bit, I don't know what it was, maybe a little bit fearful of like not living up to what people think I should have been or I could be. You're basically making the World Cup or moving on, getting your tour card straight away and all that. Like it kind of paralyzed me in, in, a, in a way. That I look back on now and I'm repairing some of that stuff from the last year and so much work from the last year that has nothing to do with playing golf on the course. Like, what it does, but like the work that I'm doing is not anything it's around not golf. It's, yeah. just, it's, it's sitting down with pen and paper for hours, like, you know, delving into your thoughts and then going, then writing all that stuff down and then going away to talk to somebody about it that that can help you reframe and re- re- relive, in a way, those moments better 
with what you know now and, and understand like okay you weren't the person you were then so you weren't able to deal with these situations that way but you know it's, it's okay and then putting to bed those those moments that caused some pain we say because there's been a lot of moments in the last five years that have caused me a lot of pain um more and more so than people really know um so but i'm dealing with all that now and i'm actually in a really good place with, with my golf and right now you know we're not playing golf and most people are like oh it's shit you know i'm doing stuff right now that's gonna make when i come back it's gonna be huge for me when i come back playing you know stuff that a lot of people wouldn't be able to do you know the idea of it's great but you know, i find it so difficult to do and i'm so proud of myself for doing it and then in the middle of doing it as well I'm grateful for the people that that are around me giving me the the time you know to help me better myself and you can see where where this is going and what's happening and the player that I am just that I've, my mindset has been a bit skewed for the last few years and we're repairing all that now and it's, it's good and I'm looking forward to getting back playing but you know I'm not thinking about it I'm like when that time comes I'll be ready you know but mm-hmm. right now I'm not like oh, I can't wait you know because I'm in the middle of doing something now that's it's going to be important you know it's, in, it's interesting what you said there um, about you were all you're really good at like chasing like, I need to get this is my next yeah. thing. This is my next thing. <clears throat> and it's funny how... Um, Subconsciously now. Of, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. No, like, like totally. But we spoke off, We spoke before we hit record about like that, like, like 2014 versus 2015 and like the whole Walker Cup cycle and stuff. And um, but I think like for every player, um, rebalancing your vision... And like being <clears throat> maybe being like a wee bit conscious of what you're like what you are chasing and what your tasks and goals and like what you like the, the progress you're looking to make is is and, and, and doing that regularly is important because like it's funny what you said it's like like in 2014 you had a really good year and it was yeah. almost as if well fuck I've, I've kind of done what I, my goal has for this two-year cycle is because you put yourself in the position where if a walker cup team was picked I'll be one of the first names on the list. Yeah. But you're like, shit, I've got, actually I've got another year to play and now it's not actually, I've done what I set out to do. Now it's, now it's not a chase, it's a, ho- it's a hold on. Yeah. It's almost like a keeping possession kind of thing yeah. as opposed to like attacking and going forward. Um, yeah. And that was way more difficult for you. Obviously again, you're not aware of it, but we're looking back. You can yeah, looking back it. now, I've relived it. I've relived 2015, I've that done. I've wrote an assignment on it. <laughs> bigger time than I've done in any <laughs> college career um, and I'm now in the middle of 2016 but um, yeah I wasn't I, I don't know I wasn't able I was able for it like in a way but it just um, it was it was difficult time because and I didn't really know why you know I didn't I didn't even know what was happening at the time really until now looking back on it but now I look back on it and because I'd done the work, like I did a lot of work delving into my childhood as well and, and different moments that had a significant impact on me in sports and often not in sports. Like, and there is some parts of that, that that are probably the stem of why I thought about things the way I did. So as you said there, you know, I'm trying to hold on to something. And then you have a huge fear of failure because failure is like, you know, not acceptable in a way. That's something I, I learned from a moment in my childhood, like a really significant moment that was lasted a whole year in a different sport with a different manager that was just really a different coach that was just so poor. Like, have I seen a coach like that coaching kids the way they are now? Like, I'd stop the whole fucking show and be like, you need to leave for right now. You can't treat kids that way. Like, you don't know what's happening. You don't know how that's going to affect them. You know? So that that type of, like, it was unacceptable to make a mistake and failure was like, you couldn't fail. Like failure, you, you're not going to get anything from failure. Failure is just failure. And when you win or when you do something well, that's just the way it's supposed to be. A hugely negative mindset, especially as a kid, you know, you have a standard. And if you're not at that standard, forget about it. Mm-hmm. So that, I brought that into my year as 2015 there, you know, it's like being like, okay, this is what everyone perceives you need to be doing to, to uh, make the work up and I've done a lot of it in 2014 and now I'm trying to hold on to, to what, what I have and not fail because failure is unacceptable and you don't learn that from it and I was un- un- nearly unable at times to 
to allow myself just to, to be. And it was a really unhealthy mindset to be in. First of one as well. It's funny too, like you look at it and you go, well, <laughs> because like, okay, well, let's say the, the, the big thing around you was like the Walker Cup thing and you couldn't do, it was like, well, I've already played well enough to earn my spot. The only thing, the only thing I can do now is yeah. lose it, like to get me. Like no wonder it was a tough year. Yeah. If you Knowing what you know now, they're right. Year. No, I relived it and I reframed it. In a, in, a, in a big assignment and it was a great, great year don't get Huge. me wrong I, I, I reframed the whole year and now I look back and it has been a very very pleasing like I learned a lot from the year and I look back and I with fond memories but I didn't before I did the assignment I look back and I was like oh I didn't enjoy that year at all it was full of stress and full of you know it, <laughs> when you, when you when, from what you've learned though right and this is something I think most like a lot of players and a lot of the young guy, guys that I work with experience which is like um they they sometimes have a chase in the year which will be the year like it's like fuck it right come on let's not go down we're gonna get this we'll get this done right and they do really well and then sometimes they have an attainment year where they've actually done what they set out to do the previous year and it tends to like be not such a good year if that makes sense so like i've seen it with a couple of guys that coach like say trying to get onto an irish team or whatever and they're like they may have maybe they got maybe they maybe they felt that they should have got on the team the year before, and they don't. And then the next year, boom, they get on. Um, but then the year they get on, they're trying to hold their spot, and it kind of like you know what I mean. They have a a so so year, let's say. Um, yeah. I mean, how would you help? How would you like? You yeah. know, in terms of what you've learned in framing and reframing and and and, and like uh, realigning your path how would you help somebody in those similar situations come through again now? um it's funny one of the it's, it's actually a big part of kind of what what i think about now when i get nervous at an event i'm playing on the Alps tour now and i played in two events in egypt i did quite well in both events not results wise were okay but like i did quite well in what i was trying to do like in my past something like control i was very good at it that week and the results you know, they're just a byproduct of that. But what I would, the one thing when I get nervous, and we talked about it, I talk about it a lot with Ed. Is, and he said it to me a few times that if you're just, you know, we know where this is going. Like, you know, we're we're here, we're here, and on the house tour, like we're aiming to be up here. You know, you know, have a dream, win a majors. Mm-hmm. So in in the, in the midst of things like. This, this, this is nothing like you know so it's, it's you know if you make a team like as a kid like and you make an Irish team your goal is to be a professional golfer and, and be a winner on PJ Tour would say like when you're when you make an Irish team that's just part of it mm-hmm. you can develop the mindset of it and it's not an easy thing to do but like having being able to reach ahead and understand like that okay like this is where I want to go you know so this right now it might seem like everything right now it might seem like if i don't get this it's the end of the world but it's not this is just part of it this is just a stepping stone to where, mm-hmm. where, where you're going to get to so to be able to nearly understand that like okay once you get there once you make that team that that's, that's not the end goal like, if that's the end goal then you know in a way like what's this? you're obviously going to have a lot of then like this is your end goal and you can't see anything past that you're going to have a huge exhale after you get there and then it's going to be like oh, i want to hold on but to have like a, a clear image of, of where you want to get to and just see that as like oh this is just this is just part of the journey you know i'm just going to do what i need to do today it's just part of the journey you know we're going here when i get to here it's going to, it's probably going to be you know very very nervous but when you do get to there there's going to be you're going to keep moving and forward. To push it forward right? yeah so it, it's just kind of put it into perspective in a way of what and always, always been reaching for something that's ahead of, of where you are and understanding where you are is important because it is. Like, it's important to make those teams. But like, it's not the end of the world if you don't. Like, you know, you're, you're going to have loads of opportunities over the years. And it's just being able to step out of the frame, of the box you're in and see things for like how they really are and then, then be able to move back in with that clear perspective. One of the um, one of the things that I think you've done really well that I've witnessed over the last little while 
is I think you've always been, <clears throat> ironically, um, I said that like 015 year because of like how well you played 014 and you go to that to 15. And I'd say that you've always been really good at having the big picture. You're like, I know where, I, like, I know what, I know where I kind of like the end goal is in terms of it was, it's always been really, like a really high one. But yeah. and I, I, I think that a lot of people, you're right, I think they set the bar too low and it's like, if we could just get an Irish team, that would be happy. Do you know what I mean? And then it's like that big exhale and they struggle. But, but as you said, like, there's not, there, like, we all know there is no there because when you get to there, you're going to push it forward and you're going to keep, you know, keep evolving, keep growing, yeah. keep progressing. Um, but one of the things I think you kind of, I've, I've noticed is um, while to, you know the end goal is really part of it you're always going to push it further you've been able to take a lot more um enjoyment out of the day-to-day like work and effort of being a world-class performer an athlete a warrior like you know what i mean like you're not just taking satisfaction out of the 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 attainment but you're taking satisfaction of the day-to-day effort like yeah it's it's probably the one of the big things we want to talk to Ed about is like the 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 results like I'm playing it in my head. Um, the results are just what what they are, you know. Like, but that's not that's not what it's about, like you know. You know, getting on tour and having playing for big money and so it's all important, like and and you know having the lovely rent, uh, not rent a car, but shuttle shuttle car and BMW. And, having a little nice lounge, you can go in there and have your lunch and all that stuff. But all that stuff's kind of not what it's about, you know, what I've kind of come to realize in the last year. Like, it's about much more than that. It's about, like, all you can control and everything that you're doing um, on a day-to-day, as you said. Um, like, everything else is just a byproduct of, of the work that you're doing. That's funny. I think that's, like, the biggest shift. I suppose you've always had it to a large group, but it's the biggest shift I've seen you in you over the last while is like um, you're uh, you're um, in the how to put it you're embracing the battle like you're embracing competing you're embracing like yeah. like 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 pitting your skills against whoever pitches up you know what I mean wanting to compete like yeah. having no. that this yeah. thing, I'd be okay with losing but fucking having the desire like. Yeah learning that you know? I yeah. wasn't the one time I was like I I prefer not to, the thought of losing was so so high I prefer just not to be the thought of doing not doing well I just prefer not to play. Like that's why I was for a few years and, you know. I'm not ashamed to say it like I just it's just that's Absolutely. what manifested that's the way I became, you know. It's I obviously working very hard to move out of that. And I have been like now I look at things it still does scare me sometimes when I would play but I look at things now like I'm doing so much work with my behavior and with with my approach and with you know dealing with stuff in in tournament and working on my performance and my game in general that like the overall thing I say to myself now before before I go up and play when I'm nervous is like well, well this is what this is the fun part this is what the work is for the work you've been doing for the last few years last year this is this is where you get to test it. This is because this is the place that you will learn if it works or not. Not on the range hitting fucking 200 balls, you know, after after you hit one bad shot on the golf course. Like, oh, yeah, I've got it now. No, you won't have it there. When you play golf and you play it at a high level in, in chaotic moments, in, in chaotic moments on the course, like, if you can pull off a shot and, and pull off what you're trying to do with yourself in that moment and let go of the fear of, of failure, and replace it with, with with a task that enables you to just to do what you need to do. And if it doesn't happen, fine. But as long as you committed to what you needed to do, what you control, then being completely okay with it. The thing that, that that used to drive me insane was that I wasn't I had nothing to to focus on apart from the result of the shot, of the round, of the you know, and my perception of what was a good round or a good shot. You know, people paint a perception of what's good and bad and it gets into what you think is good and bad and if good and bad and the score and the result dictates how you go about your business it's just going to be a very very bad situation 
especially if you go down a bad a bad track with it, you know, and your mind starts going going crazy with and with you know different scenarios of what could happen if oh, I hit it up there, hit it here, and, oh my god, if I make eight here, you know that type of thing. It was just it all became too much, too many times for me, and it was completely unenjoyable place to be. I didn't like I didn't enjoy golf at times. Like mm-hmm. in the middle of in the middle of that twenty fifteen season, I didn't I withdrew from a tournament because I was hating a big tournament. Mm-hmm. You know, in the midst of things to try and make a Walker Cup team, like I just I can't do it anymore. Not like this. Like, my mind was just fucking. I couldn't have to take a break. You know. And I look back on it now and be like, it's a hugely ballsy thing to do. Because then I knew like when I had come back to an even bigger tournament, I needed to perform because I just took a break. You know, I put that, that pressure on myself and I did. But I backed myself because I needed to take a break. And at the time, I didn't realize how big a decision it was, you know, for me. Not, I knew it was a big decision in the context of making a work cup. I didn't realize mm-hmm. how big a decision it was for me to make that decision, you know. Mm-hmm. In the midst of it all. So, yeah. Well, I think that's like, uh, that's a brilliant, well, I, we'll call it part one, guys, because I'm sure we can definitely fill a part two, right? Yeah. So, uh, that, talk about what you mean, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was, that was a brilliant part one. Um, we'll definitely do a part two. Um, uh, thanks, Emil, guys. No bother. <laughs>